I welcome everyone to Christ Like International. I'm happy to have you again as we share the word of God together. We're going to start something that is very important on what I have titled, Who is Jesus? And in the personality of Jesus, we are going to look at how could he be God and man at the same time? And also, why did he die? Because there are a lot of things that people don't understand, even Christians don't understand about the personality and identity of Jesus Christ. There are two major biblical accounts in the Gospel of John and in the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of John gives us an idea of how Jesus became Jesus. And the account of Luke gives us an idea that how he came into the world. Now, in John chapter number 1, verse 1 to 5, John said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So John is saying that in the beginning of time was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he's saying that in the beginning was Word, was the Word of God. And the word of God was God himself. You cannot separate God from his word. God and his word are the same. God and his word are the same. So he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So here we see, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. So we see two personalities. The word, God, the word was with God, the word was God. So the two personalities became one. The word that was with God, the word that was God, the word was God. Then he said, that was with God in the beginning. The same was with God in the beginning. In other words, it has always been with God. It is with God and it is always with God. And the same was with God in the beginning. So we have seen that the word is God. So John is establishing that the word of God is God himself. So when God gives you his word, God is giving you himself. God is giving you himself. When God speaks his word to you, God is speaking himself into you. So, he said, the same was with God in the beginning. Then he said, and all things were made by him. It means that the word that was with God, the word that was God, the word that is God, the word that the same was with God in the beginning. He said, all things were made by him. All things we see, all things that are visible and invisible. He said, they were made by the word that was with God, by the word that was God. It means that everything was made by his word. Everything was made by the word of God. Then he said, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It means that without God's word, God cannot make anything. God can do nothing without his word. It means that the working ability of God is in his word. Do you want to know the ability of God? The ability of God can be expressed in his word. So everything we see in creation, everything we see God, the, the creation of Adam and Eve, the, the mountains that we see, the skies and all the natural things we see that are beautiful. The Bible is telling us that the source of this creation is the word of God. He said all things were made by him. He means that the word has a personality. He said without him was not anything made that was made. Then he said in him was life. And the life was the light of men. It means that the word of God has the life of God. The word of God has the substance of God. The word of God contains the characteristics of God. The word of God has the essence of God. 
In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. It means that darkness could not absorb the power of the light that came out of the life of the world. So he's talking about the personality of the word, the characteristics of the word, the pedigree of the word, that the word was with God. The word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In the word is the life of God. The word is the light of man. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. So John give us the pedigree, the integrity, the reliability, the power, and the personality because God's word has always been with God. God's word has always been in God. God's word has always been this mind. God's word has always been the expression of the personality of God. When God wants to express his personality, he expressed his personality through the force of his word. Now, when we read from, when, when we jump from uh, to verse number 10, John chapter 1, verse number 10 to 14, John said that, and he came into the world, and the world knew him not. The Bible said he was in the world. And the world was made by him. Because the Bible said that all things were made by him. And John said, he was in the world. He said the word that has always been the expression of God. The word that has always been God speaking it out. The word that has always been the reasoning, the thoughts, and the mind of God. The word that has always been an expression of God's power and his personality. The word that has always expressed the will and the mind of God. He said, he was in the world. In other words, for the first time, God's, God and his word became a different personality. Because it has always been expressed. The personality of the word of God has always been expressed in the personality of God. But here we see that the word that made all things was in the word that he said, and the word was made by him. Because all things were made by the word. Then he said, but the word knew him not. Then he said, he came to his own. In the own of those that he has created, he came into the things that he has made. But the creation couldn't recognize their maker. Then he said, he came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many that received him from verse 12, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Now the verse 14 is the big deal. He said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and mercy. Now John is saying that the word that has always been with God, the word that has always been the mind of God, the word that has always been the expression of God, the word that has always been that which makes all things, the word that has always carried the life of God. He said for the first time, the word that was always an expression of God. It has always been God expressing his thought, expressing his mind, for the first time in history, the Bible said, the word was made flesh. The word became human. The word was made a human being. That was the incarnation. When the word of God was made flesh, 
when the word of God receives a human personality. The word receives a human personality. To be a son to the father. In other words, God's word is God himself. So God made a son out of his word. And the word was made human to dwell among us. That is why his name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When God made a human personality in his word, if God is God, then his word will be God. Because you cannot say, you cannot separate the deity of God from his word. The word of God takes the same nature with God. You cannot differentiate God from his word. The deity nature of God is the same nature of his word. So the word of God receiving the personality of human will not reduce the word from being God. He said the word was made flesh. Now when the word was made flesh, how did the word enter into the world? In Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 we saw how an angel Gabriel appeared to a virgin lady called Mary. He said, woman, you are highly favored among all the women. He said, you are going to conceive in your womb a son. You are going to conceive in your womb a child and you shall, you shall give birth to us a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Then he said, his name shall be called the son of the highest and he shall sit on the throne of his father David. Now, from the verse 33 coming, Mary asked a simple question. He said, I'm angel of the Lord. All that you have said, I believe it. But how can this be? Seeing I know not a man. What was he implying? He said, I'm not doubting God's visitation. But you can see for yourself that I am a virgin. I have not had any sexual activity with any man. I have not known any man. And according to the natural principle, another human being can only be born when a man and a woman, there is a meeting between a man and a woman. There is a sexual activity between a man and a woman. So how can this be? Seeing I know not a man. Then the angel said, don't worry. This word that has come unto you is a seed from God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And that holy thing in you shall be called the Son of God. Now John in his account is telling us what our eye couldn't see. That the word of God was made flesh. And we saw a woman receiving that word and the word of God was sown as a seed in the womb of a woman. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, the word took on the body of a human being. So Jesus was the word of God that took the human flesh. He was the word of God in the human body. Even though he was born in the human body, he still carries the life of God. Because Jesus couldn't have had the nature of sin. He couldn't have had the nature of Adam because the seed of his birth was the word of God. So we see a word of God that is divine. God releasing that word into a womb of a woman. And through the womb of the woman, the word took on the human body. And was born as the son of God. So that word that Mary received. John gave us the pedigree of the word. He gave us that ability of God. That was made flesh. And how? Through the womb of Mary. The word was incarnated. The word was made a human. And live among men. So with these two accounts. We now have an idea. The composition of Jesus Christ. Now, for we to be able to understand the full personality of Christ, there are three 
key element that we need to understand when it comes to the personality of Christ. Three key elements. We will sign with this three key element and we will continue from there. There are three key elements we need to understand when it comes to the personality of Christ. Number one, the first element is Jesus as the divine son of God. Like we saw in John's account, John is given an account that it was God who made a son out of his word. God made a son out of his word. And that son was made to live among man in a human body. So, for you to understand the personality of Christ, the first key element that we're going to deal with is that Jesus as the divine son of God. The second key element that we need to understand in the personality of Christ is that Jesus as the fulfillment of the ancient biblical prophecies. Before the word of God was made a human, which was 100% man but 100% God, there were numerous prophecies from Genesis up to the time he came, there were a lot of prophecies about how the Lord Christ is going to be born. So the second key element we need to understand about the personality of Christ is that Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the ancient biblical prophecies. Now the third element we need to understand if we can understand the personality of Christ is Jesus as the promised savior of the world. Jesus as the promised savior of the world. So in our next broadcast, we are going to look at Jesus as the divine son of God and we are going to look at Jesus as the fulfillment of the ancient biblical prophecies. Then we look at Jesus as the promised uh, savior of the world. Then it will help us to be able to answer the question, who is Jesus and how could he be God and man at the same time and why did he die? God bless you for coming in your way. My name is Reverend Prince Bafo, the lead pastor for Christlike International Assembly. I will come in your way again. Bye-bye. God bless you.